My name is Alina Adams. I was born in Odessa, USSR. I wrote two books set in the Soviet Union. My daughter was born in America. I'm going to tell her about the Soviet experience through books. All right, so this week we're doing something a little different again. We're really mixing it up here, trying to make things exciting. We're reading From Medalach to Matriarchs, a journal, Jewish Women of Yesterday to Inspire Your Today by Mirta Ines Trupp. So your generation loves to journal, don't they? What do you guys get out of journaling? Doing it, it's satisfying, it's calming. You know, you just sit, you put on a nice little audiobook, and then you just journal and you make pretty pictures. And then you, at the end, you have a big journal. And then when, when you're sitting on your birthday and you're all sad because you're getting old, you go and you're like, oh, look at me in fifth grade. I used to be happy. Now I have another question about this. So this journal, not only is it for you to journal in, but every day there is a different inspirational story about a Jewish woman. So the women who are in this book, who are inspirational Jewish women, they're not all Soviet Jewish women. They're not even all Ashkenazi Jewish women. It's actually a very nice, diverse collection. But the question I have for you as a young Jewish woman, when you read about the accomplishments of Jewish women who came before you for generations, do you find it inspirational or do you find it intimidating? I'm always surrounded by accomplished people. That's not really something that's new in my life. I'm just reading about more of them. Well, but well, how does it make you feel? Because I'm always curious about this when people talk about children need to know about the great heroes, whether it's Black History Month or Women's History Month or a book about Jewish matriarchs who achieved great things. I'm always curious, is it supposed to tell you, yes, I can achieve all of these things? Or is it telling you, look at all these things that other people achieved who all lived in much worse circumstances than you. Why are you slacking? I think it's a bit of both. I think it matters when you are, when you, what age you're reading it. When you are reading a book about, for example, I don't know, a, a rhythmic gymnast in Russia who was seven and is already has two word titles and you're like, oh. Well, let's put it into context because why you suddenly came up with this random No, I don't know. Okay, so tell the nice people, so this is actually our second season, tell the nice people what you did over winter break from 2023 to 2024. Oh, okay. <laughs> I competed in the Maccabi Pan American Games in Argentina for Team USA. In rhythmic gymnastics. In rhythmic gymnastics. You forgot to put that part in. So actually, here's a really good example. So before you went to the Maccabi Games in Argentina, you went to the Maccabi Games in Israel in t the summer of 2022. Yes? Yes. Yes. And there you met the Israeli Olympic champion in rhythmic gymnastics. So you've been a fan of for a long time. And I believe the text you sent me was, I literally died. I literally died. You literally died. You're not even here right now. But that's my question to you. So this is someone that you've looked up to. This is someone who has achieved so much more than you and will. <laughs> okay. Fact to fact. How do you feel about that? Good for her. So when you read a book like From Medalach to Matriarchs, a journal by Mirta Ines Trupp, and there's stories in there of, you know, 14-year-old girls who are living in ghettos and in villages where Cossacks come and rampage, or on the Lower East Side of New York before it became really expensive to live there, and they are younger than you, and they are living in circumstances that are more than you can even imagine, and they're achieving these great things, what are the thoughts that go through your head? Well, I think it really connects to my whole life motto of uh, my, my parents and my grandparents went through everything so I could have first world problems <laughs> because they had to do all this hard stuff. And now I can lay around and complain about not having any books to read when books were literally being burned. <laughs> um, and I can complain about there not being the right amount of cream cheese flavors and the fact that they didn't have the donut I wanted because y'all did all the sacrificing already. So I'm like chilling. And you have a very strong opinion about what makes a good bagel. Oh, yes. I do have very strong opinions about a bagel, and I believe that as Jewish people, we should. So, basically, these are the problems and the challenges that you're facing. Mm -hmm. And when you read about these women who had slightly bigger challenges than you, do they make you feel like perhaps you are obsessing a little too much about bagels? Or do they make you think, wow, those women would be so happy for me that I have this. Uh, this is the biggest problem I have. Yeah, well, every time I complain about something where I'm like, I can't find any socks, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me, you're always like, well, I hope this is the worst thing that ever happens to you. And I'm like, yeah, me too. 
All right, so when your kids complain that not having the right socks, not, not just not having socks, but not having... I don't the, have any socks! Well, that's because you don't do the laundry often enough, but that's that's our issue. So when not having the right socks and you say to your child, may that be the worst thing that ever happens to you, and they go, oh, nothing worse could ever possibly happen to you, I suggest getting them from Made Love to Matriarchs, a journal by Myrda Ines Trump, and not only will they know that worse things can happen, but they will know that they can overcome these things should something worse than a sock crisis happen to them.